What up, homies? Let's talk about racks. Yeah, it's possibly the uh, most boring topic on the planet. Maybe not. Uh, but anyway, we are going to go into the deep down depths. No, we're not. We're going to go and go over some basic tips on uh, rack building, thermal management, and that kind of shibaz. Um, I think what we will do is I'll talk a little bit about the principles of rack building and then I will build it and then we'll come back and decide on why I've built it like I have. What do you think? Let's do this. Hot air rises. I know, it's things that you learn at school but it's pretty important when you're building a rack because these things, HD anywhere, Cost an absolute fortune, and so does most kit that you put into a rack. Where you place it effectively decides on how long it will last. You know, these things um, are designed to take and manage heat themselves, but what they're not designed to do is be stacked upon each other and effectively be cooked along a long period of time. So, um, I think the 101 is the drawing of cool air in and the hot air being dispelled. Now this can be done in two ways, uh, passive and active. So a passive system is a rack similar to this, uh, to this one, which will be an open rack built into a, a, uh, a controlled environment in a rack room where the um, air around the equipment is at um, a reasonable temperature for cool air and hot air to be pulled through these pieces of equipment without damaging them too much. Now, that, if I'm honest, happens once in a blue moon. You know, we try and aggressively say to clients that they need to have rack rooms and they often give them to us, but they're not, you know, five meter by four meter rack rooms with uh, a lot of space for air to cool and, and uh, be managed in a way that allows for passive um, thermal management. Most of the time we have to use active due to the space and the confinement of a rack location. So when we get given a room which is generally a meter by a meter and a half because that's all they want to give up on their square footage, we have to look to bring in cool air actively through um, maybe a vent from the outside to the lower section of the rack. This allows the cool air to be brought in at the bottom of the um, of all the equipment. And then we look at basically a active way of uh, venting that hot air out. So again, maybe fans in the ceiling, fans in the rack. That allows that cool air to be drawn from the underneath through the rack and then pulled through the rack so all the equipment can take in nice cool air and then dispel it through into wherever. I mean some racks we've done in the previ uh, previously have actually gone into heat recovery systems, some of them have just gone outside as in like a bathroom and getting rid of moisture and all the rest of it on that, on that side of things. So that is your 101 for cooling a rack. Now there's other things to talk about when thinking about thermal management. Some of these pieces of equipment, like I said before, cool through the front to the back, some of them side to side. So that really makes you decide on which rack that you're looking to use. And there's lots of different versions. And I'm not gonna bore you too much with all the different versions in this video. I'll point to some really useful information below where you can read up it by yourself. Or if you like this video and we decide to do some more, maybe we'll cover it later on. So, the other things to think about when building a rack, let's get away from thermal management. Um, spacing the equipment out, so you've got enough space, so it's not completely condensed and rammed, so you've got 20 U's with equipment and you buy a 22 U rack and leave yourself two U's of space. Think about growth, think about GIF's favorite word, future-proofing, um, and think about maybe leaving some space within the rack to allow your system to grow in the future. I guarantee if you do a good job on a project, this rack will grow and grow and grow. So 
We as a company like to leave between 40 to 50% growth. So if we put 20 U worth of equipment in, we would look to put in a 30 to 32 U rack. That gives us a bit of a wiggle room to allow us to add extra pieces of equipment, amps, extra HD matrices, anything they really want to the system without having to either buy an additional rack on top or having to squeeze everything in so tightly it becomes a mess at the back. Next thing on the list when thinking about rack building is power. So again, this is a probably a whole nother video, but if we take it back to the very, very simple principles, we, and probably maybe other people in the industry, like to put switches on the front to be able to manage the actual power of the devices. That used to be maybe something we did a few years ago and we still do on our lower end racks. These days, generally we use uh, IPPDU so we can um, remotely manage all of our devices on systems, which is brilliant, unbelievable. So when we build these, we like to keep even those on the front of the, uh, on the, front of the rack because it allows for better maintenance, better servicing, better easier ways to reboot things because let's be honest this stuff does go wrong it's how you manage those support calls that really sets you apart from other system integrators so uh, we like to utilize um, power cables in one location of the rack so they don't get intertwined with the AV cabling a little bit like the separation you do within um, being, a, being a sparky you know keep your low voltage away from your high voltage Similar principles, again, we'll look at that in another video, maybe in the future. Um, and other than that, things like where the power is located for the rack, as in when it comes in. You know, a lot of people like to put 16 double, you know, double gang um, sockets on the wall. Work out what your power requirement is for that rack, add 50% to it, and then either get a, um, you know, double gang 13 amp ring socket put onto that place because um, you can always make that, you can add sockets to that in, in the future. Uh, we like to have a specific um, breaker for our rack. So then if it trips, then we know that it's something to do specific with our rack or if the house trips, it's not gonna necessarily take away the rack and that functionality moving forward. Um, so that's the power side of things. So a couple of little tips in terms of where, where to where to locate things and what to put things on. Um, and then I think let's should we should we build should we build it? Let's build it. Come on, let's do it. That we all wish that uh, rag builds went that quickly, um, but here she is. Um, don't get me wrong, this isn't how necessarily we would produce the perfect rack. Um, a lot of this is made up of stuff that we have in the office that has either broken or been lent to us or it's been scratched, scuffed and all the rest of it. So, But it gives a basic layout, okay? it gives the basic principle of what we're trying to achieve on this. Um, you know, I want to give obviously a big shout out to Cube Racks who's uh, lent us this rack uh, for Essential Install Live. And same with the guys from uh, 1AV who's provided all the HD uh, Anywhere stuff, which is amazing. Um, what we're going to do with this rack is uh, we're going to populate it uh, and cable it as if it was um, ready for a site. So um, some of the stuff will get changed out um, and it'll have some uh, bit sexier kit in there along the way. Um, so uh, yeah, hopefully uh, we'll maybe produce those as videos on the way. Uh, and then we're going to be shipping this down to Essential Install for you guys, and we're going to do a workshop with you guys and uh, show you some of the some of the uh, some of the stuff that we've gone through here, but maybe in more detail uh, with some more professional, uh, experienced rack builders, um, which I'm sure you'll get more out of from those guys than me. But you know. Essentially, the way that we've built this is to allow passive airflow through. So the Onkyo amp at the bottom, for instance, um, bless Onkyo, um, has actually um, vents in the bottom for cool air and vents in the top for hot air, which is not great when you're 
amplifier is just above it. So we've put a vent in place in this corner just here on the front to allow cool air to pa pass through, take that hot air away from the amplifier that is the HD Anywhere and take that up and dispel it through the, uh, through the, the top of the rack. Um, we've done this progressively. If you notice that we've spaced everything out, this, I mean, in an open rack anyway, this allows for a lot of ventilation to pass through and we shouldn't get a build up of heat if we, if we actually installed this. Now, if this went into a piece of cabinetry, effectively, it's just an enclosed rack. So you still have to be careful about how you, um, how you stack things and what way spaces, spaces go. Um, we've allowed for 2U and 2U on top of the skybox. So if the guys wanted to put, add a multi-room skybox to these, um, then it's easily to, easily done. You take the 2U blank out and you, and you swap it over. So um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll definitely be adding to this rack, um, hopefully with the support of uh, a lot of the distributors out there. Um, and then it's my job to sit probably next weekend and start cabling it and make it look pretty sexy with a lot of labeling, a lot of cable, uh, cable management and all the other stuff that goes with it. So um, any questions, please drop them below in the YouTube uh, comments because I think it would be important to kind of see what you think about the video, if they've kind of gained anything from it. I think I've kind of passed over a lot of stuff and kind of kept it very simple but it's one of those topics that until you get asked the question I might miss it so please do get in touch um, and let's uh, and let's go through your questions a lot of the stuff we were hoping to cover in the next video which will be more to do with cable management and labeling I think that's some of the stuff that you guys are really um, really focused on and getting right which is amazing which is really good um, we'll do a bit more on power management once we've actually got it cabled in, and I'll actually talk to you about that. Um, and other than that, we uh, we'll go through we'll go through some of the you know the nice the nice kind of tips and tricks to making a sexy rack, so you can get it out there on social media and show off your work. So again, thank you uh, thank you for watching. Thanks for the support from the distributors, and uh, ready for the next one.